Let's go. <laughs> hey, it's Renee. So April is Autism Awareness Month. And for a lot of people, it's really just raising awareness that autism is out there and how prevalent it is. At this point, I believe that most people know someone who has or who is autistic. Um, but I, what I don't think a lot of people know or are doing is finding out how autistic people like to be referred to, what sensitivities they have, and how we as you know, neurotypical people can be more sensitive to their needs and understanding of what's going on with them so that we can be better friends, better parents, uh, better lovers in some instances. Um, so my son is 11, his name is William, and he's autistic. We've known that he was autistic since he was about one and a half. His grandmother is a nurse and she saw the signs um, of somebody with autism um, who is autistic and she took him to the doctor. But of course there was no diagnosis until he was three years old. Luckily for me, we were in a good program in Alabama and when we moved to New York. So he received a lot of early intervention, but that does not um, mean that my son is, is not autistic. Um, some people believe that he's high functioning, but for me, high functioning means that he can live an independent life. And right now, he's 11 and he doesn't have to, but I, I believe that there's going to be some struggles uh, for him as he becomes an adult. So part of my goal is to be able to be financially stable and independent enough so that I can continue to take care of my son into his adulthood while lending him some sort of independence. There are more areas um, and places where young adults with who are autistic can go and live independent or semi-independent lives in, in different neighborhoods but for my son right now what I'm trying to do is to have a tiny home or some sort of uh, additional property uh, additional home on family property so that he can be near me as an adult but not with me his paternal grandmother has also said that she will go with him to college to assist him in his college years which is a blessing and hopefully we will get to that point i i believe that you know educationally there are delays for my son which um are going to be a challenge as he gets into middle and high school so there's going to be a lot more focus that's going to be needed with him so I've talked a little bit about my son William but I really want to just take the time to let people know that people who are autistic one um, prefer most people prefer to be um, labeled as autistic and not as having autism uh, this <clears throat> while we see it as a disease or something that can be targeted or fixed I think that's you know our as parents or, or people who have autistic people in our family that's just what how we were brought into it so that's what we think the correct term is but for people um, who have who are autistic who can express you know how they refer to to be labeled is autistic because they're just saying that they're identifying that their brains work differently that they have different sensitivities and it's not that they have some disease that can be fixed and I think that's where there is a divide between parents caregivers um, people of the old school and the young adults and the you know the full grown adults who are autistic um, and you know how they be, prefer to be referred to and how they believe that their brain works and how they fit into the society it's not that they have a need to be cured it's that their brain works differently um, and it's no different from anybody else who is not neurotypical who is neuroatypical they have different challenges so for instance I can speak of my son he has a lot of sensory sensitivities whether that be touch taste um, sight sound look, um, 
that's the level of sound um, or certain well not really certain pitches but it's really like the level of sound or if there's too much auditory stimulation coming in at one time so say he's in a large crowd that is um, overstimulating to him and his brain begins to shut down because he cannot concentrate um, on on one thing he's not able to tune out all of the noises that are uh, going on around him like for instance you can hear my voice now but you also may be able to hear the TV in the other room so that pause was intentional so that you can try to hear and tune into the sound of that television um, if my son was in an overstimulated state or if that was too much noise for him that might cause his brain to shut down or be um, his ability to respond to be dulled because it's too much input coming in at one time he cannot separate out the sound of my voice versus the sound of the television it would take a lot more concentration for him to be able to do that or while I'm talking to him this might be the background noise and what he's focusing on is the television so there's different sensory um, things that are going on bright lights for instance my son when it's very in the, in the summertime and it's very sunny um, or even in the wintertime when it's like very sunny he you know will want to cover his head so we get sunglasses and hoodies and things um, to block out that sensory input so that he can focus on what's going on so that he can look across the street when he walks and not be distracted by that certain things at school like you know there's trays and if trays are freshly washed they might be wet that will cause him to not want to eat because he does not want to touch that wet tray there are certain foods that he will not eat because of the smell because of the taste and because of the texture so there's just different things that if you do not know that somebody is autistic and they go to a restaurant and they you say oh well the clams are very good and they say no I can't eat clams or I can't eat tapioca or you know any, it's something that's sensitive for them and while you may believe that they're being rude especially if you invite them to your house and they refuse to eat or for my son a lot of people are worried that he's not eating enough even though he's a big boy, they might believe if he's at school and he doesn't eat, if he's at the babysitter and he doesn't eat, that there is an issue. But that's really his sensitivity. He doesn't. He only eats certain foods and he only eats when he's comfortable, where he's comfortable at. So if he's in a new environment, he might not eat in that environment because emotionally he's just not comfortable there and he will wait until he gets home to eat. And that's, you know, that's the reality of the situation. And as a parent, it takes adjustment so for me I just knew because my mom was a strict disciplinarian I was going to be a strict disciplinarian um, but what I learned was that that was not what would work for William being strict about him eating foods backfired like he would just not eat now there is a train of thought that says just starve them out and by starve them out it's just don't feed them only feed them the foods that you want them to eat because children will not starve eventually he will eat it we have done that a couple times but honestly I've just not been diligent enough to force him to eat um, you know vegetables and things that are uncomfortable for him at this stage I just believe that I'm here to show him that I care about him exactly the way he is but as he goes into adulthood, he's 11 now, and probably, you know, as we go into the next year, we'll start weaning him into and teaching him things about adult life um, so that he understands that this, we accept you for the way that you are, but in our society, there are things that are expected of you, and here's how you navigate through those things and pushing him beyond his limits right now. Um, I believe that it's going to be tough and it's really a tight line that we, uh, you know, me, my mother, his father, um, everybody who is around him that gives him care, it's a, a fine struggle between acceptance and preparation. Acceptance for who he is and the limitations that he has and the preferences that he has and pushing him so that he can survive in this society because 
you know, I'm probably not going to outlive him. So who is going to take care of him after that? Can he, will he be able to take care of himself if Lord forbid anything happens to me or his caregivers? Um, it's a hard line to ride as a parent. I believe that goes for atypical parents as well. How do you accept your child for who they are while still pushing them so that they can succeed and have a fruitful and a successful life as an adult? Uh, you know, it's hard, it's tough, and we're working through it. So I've been kind of rambling on. I hope that there was some streamline um, some stream that you could pick up through that while I talked about um, my experience raising my autistic son William and you know if not if nothing else I hope that I've given you something to think about and a way to have a little bit more compassion for people who are different and to wait before you judge someone because you don't know what their sensitivities are and what their limitations are. Um, you know, a blessing and a curse for... Hey, boo. Watch out, watch out. Hey, babe. Babe. You have fun at therapy? No fun? Yes, fun? No fun. No fun? He didn't do, he wasn't good? He was echoing. Uh, like he's doing right now? Mm-hmm. And he only started doing that when he's in trouble. Oh. He only does that when he's in trouble. Oh, so you're upset about being in trouble, so you're not going to do well anywhere? Mm-hmm. That's why it has to be longer. Than a day? Exactly. Because mm. he's not getting it. That he was in trouble. Oh. So that's why it has to be longer. Oh, okay. Because he just reversed and he, it's like it's over. It's done. Oh. But he got to really like, continue to get the consequences. He hasn't got, he's not getting that. So that's why I extended it. Mm -hmm. To don't do a day anymore. Well, you got to tell me that. Huh? Mm -hmm. You got to tell me that. Girl, I be forgetting. I be forgetting. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we got to get used to everybody again and you right. everything. Mm -hmm. So he going to be a complete lovey-dovey and uh -huh, questions and, and all that good stuff, but okay. no. Okay, so no. Okay. okay. Love you. William. So that was my son, William, and he just came back from therapy. And what my mom was saying was that he got in trouble yesterday because the teacher told him that he couldn't do something. So he broke a mouse and we're trying to teach him that you know that emotional control that just because he's upset doesn't mean that he can lash out and this is going to become more important as he um, moves into puberty because his emotions are going to be more erratic because of the changes in his hormones and we can't have him breaking things and hitting people because he's emotionally upset so we're trying to teach him about regulating his emotions through consequences which right now is taking away his electronics um, and you know we're open to different methods and trying to figure that out and trying to help him navigate through where he is right now where he's going to be in a few years and how do we prepare him to move into adulthood so I hope you learned something I hope that you are a little bit more compassionate to diff people who are different than you um, and that you don't pity people who are autistic because they're just people um, with different abilities and so that's you know as a parent that's all you can do is try to navigate your um, child through the world so that they can be fruitful adults and that's what we're doing so if you have any questions leave them in the com comments um, and I will put a couple links for um, advocates for people with uh, people who are autistic and I hope you learned something Take a, take a, one, two, three. Hold back, the press for me. Take a, take a, one, two, three. Why don't be the press for me?